This episode of the Secrets to Success podcast is brought to you by RX Bar. RX Bar is a whole food protein bar made with 100% whole ingredients. They started in 2013 with a mission of providing a real protein bar that didn't include all the fillers, additives, chemicals, or the added sugar. Just to be sure that you got the point, the ingredients are labeled on the front of the package and not hidden behind the fold on the back. Beyond being a go-to snack that checks off a number of nutritional boxes, RX Bars actually taste delicious. For 25% off your first order, visit rxbar.com forward slash success and enter the promo code success at checkout. Again, rxbar.com forward slash success and enter the promo code success at checkout. Today's show is also brought to you by Organifi. Organifi is an organic superfood supplement line that makes quality, trusted nutrition convenient and accessible. Their most popular product, Green Juice, solves the problem of juicing greens on the go. Just add water, drink, and let your body soak up the benefits. Visit Organifi.com, that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com, to learn more about an exciting offer for you, our podcast listeners. And now, to today's show. I wake up every single day, I am who I say I am. And I get what I get because I live in beast mode. Stop being gazelle. You're not average. You're not even good. You were born to be great. What's going on, world? Welcome to another edition of the Secret to Success podcast. I'm your host, CJ, joined as always in person. This time. By the Bayesian sensation, Mr. Carl Phillips. What's happening? Y'all can give it up for him. We got live through the audience. Live. What's going on? And Dr. Eric Thomas. Give it up for him. What it do? What it do? What it do? And uh, as y'all can hear, for those of you in listener land, we are in front of our wonderful family. Our Game Changers family is here. They joined us from all over the country. If you don't know what Game Changers is, you should, and you will know about them very shortly. Um, this is our speaker training series where we train the next up and coming ETs and uh, best motivational speakers in the world right here in uh, Atlanta, Georgia this time. We usually meet in Michigan, but we're in Atlanta this time. And let me tell you something, if day two is as good as day one, we're gonna be all right, man, because you guys, the growth that you've experienced, not only as speakers, but as entrepreneurs and business owners, and I'm seeing people getting big checks rolling in now, and just uh, see the smiles on your faces, lets me know that something's going well. So, uh, excellent job to those of you who went yesterday, and then uh, today, I can't wait to see some more fire, so. Um, yeah, let me say this though real quick, see, um, you know, it was a big deal when we did BU, you know what I'm saying? And I thought that was going to be it. And so I'm just excited to see you guys because it's like, you know, you have the armed forces, but then you got the Green Beret. You know what I'm saying? You got Navy SEAL. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so just looking at you guys, I'm like, wow, these are the leaders of that group. You know what I'm saying? BU Strong, about 3,000. And then there, BU, you know, you got Survive, Strive, Thrive, you know, and then, of course, Game Changers. So I'm, I'm just super excited to know when I look at you, what that means to us, that we've grown, you know? So, uh, yeah, I'm super excited to see you guys. And I'll talk to y'all later, but I'm looking forward to not just you guys getting to this level, but what you're going to do to help us in the world, you know what I'm saying, to change the world. So, yeah, super what excited. What is Jalen doing? <laughs> Trying not to be seen on camera. <laughs> he did a good job. Yeah. A little, uh, I, pre- I appreciate the little military cross, <laughs> but this ain't that kind of podcast. Yeah. It's like a hood podcast. You can just walk right on through. Oh, that, uh, that ain't got to do with podcast. He know his father. That's some, <laughs> right. yeah, that's some different stuff that he was on. Yeah, that's respect. Yeah. Um, man, we got a, a lot going on right now, but one of the main things uh, is Valentine's Valentine's Day coming up. And so I know neither one of you are nearly as romantic as I am, but I was wondering what y'all were gonna do. But first I wanna say fair file, and y'all can help us out with this. Now fair file, so my wife had told me a while ago, maybe about a year ago, she was like, I want some earrings, like some nice real earrings, some diamond studs. And I was like, hey, don't get, just get the fake ones, cause I know you, and you gonna misplace them. And they expensive, right? So she was like, no, 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 I want them, I want them, I want them. So she begged me for them. I'm like, bet, all right, it's too much money to spend on some earrings, but that's what you want? Cool. You bet not lose them. So she's like, all right, cool. So she gets the earrings and she loves them, whatever. 
probably about two months after she had him, um, I was washing dishes. Now, unbeknownst to me, my wife is soaking her earrings in a cup of water about this big, a glass cup. So I'm going to wash the dishes, I'm putting stuff in the dishwasher, grab the cup, flip it over, boom, wash everything. Wife comes home, or comes in the room, say, where are my earrings at? I hear the dishwasher running. I'm not thinking anything of it. She's like, they were in a cup sitting on the, I said, you mean with all the rest of the dirty cups in the whole house, just right there? That, she was like, yeah. So, did, so boom, we open it up, we tear the dishwasher open. I'm looking everywhere. Found both of the earrings and the backs. Praise God, hallelujah. <laughs> right? So, and they clean. so <laughs> rewind back to Christmas break, we back in Michigan. Now, mind you, I told my wife, don't ever, 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 ever do that again. Go to Michigan a couple months later. This is over Christmas break. My dad's washing dishes. My wife decides she needs to soak her earrings again. And uh, long story short, dad does the dishes, pours a couple thousand dollars worth of earrings down the drain, never to be seen again. Y'all should have seen my wife's face when she had to tell me what happened. She <laughs> came in the room and was like, uh, babe. Uh. <laughs> and uh, I was just thinking, fair file, because I was going to say, I'm not getting her any more earrings. And I know Valentine's Day is coming up. And like, she purposely ain't been wearing no earrings. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, the last few days, it's just been like, just bare, like nothing. <laughs> like, she won't even wear her hoops, nothing. She just like, and I think she's trying to set me up for Valentine's it's Day. It's but a fair setup. file, I'm not buying it. So I'm trying to figure out from y'all, am I right or wrong? This, I, I gave her a shot, it 50, didn't work 50. out. I mean, if you try to prove a point, you're right. <laughs> you know what right, right, right. That's what you try to do, you're right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, the question is, how do you want the day to end? Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think I want the couple grand in my account. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Well, it's fair that is all it's fair. A, yeah, all but no. Fair. Um, so anyway, in all seriousness, what are you planning to do for Didi, and what are you planning to do for Tamisha? Now, Carl's at my house. Carl lives with me for, and his whole family. Oh. We have like a whole little situation going on at the house. But what are you planning on doing so I know? That way I don't look like I got upstairs. <laughs> you good. Um, I actually leave on Valentine's Day, and I was strategic. Like, I planned a trip to leave so I could get out of his way, because the last time he was doing helicopter rides and all kind of stuff. Right. So I was like, let me get up out the way. We're not doing all that. But... We just got back from a trip to Barbados that was all about my wife and her family, so I think I have a pass. No. Oh, no, 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 no. Huh? No. Y'all don't think so? Oh, Y'all don't think so? Young Padawan. <laughs> Y'all don't think so? Young Padawan. That was a long exactly. trip that was about her you family. You should have took it on the 14th. Oh, no, that ain't got it right. <laughs> you should have been going over Valentine's See, that's Ooh. why Carl always get messed Ooh, up. I'm yeah. in trouble then. No, yeah. we actually are traveling on Valentine's Day, so this one is going to be kind of tricky. I'm going to have to have some. It's a 90-minute flight from Atlanta to I'm going to have to have some. Just meet us at the house. That's what I'm going to have to mm. do. I have something. Just meet us at the house. Something prepared. Yeah, I'll figure something out. But we'll have some meet, have meet some us organifi. at the house. Some Organifi at the house for sure. For sure. That'll be a part. It'll be a, a spread. <laughs> you know we'll have Organifi in there. bouquet of Organifi <laughs> right there. E, what you got up? Yeah, well, I, I'm, you Are y'all going back home? Where you going? No, I'm a, that's why I said mine's is unfair. But we're going to Vegas. So I got an okay. insider at the hotel. So my man already what got is, Hold on. What you explain to us normal folk. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 seriously. Because I just found out the other day we were at the W, and I didn't even know there was such thing as an insider. I'm saying, what's the insider? Because I think I got an outsider. Um, <laughs> my experience is so regular here. You know what I'm saying? So what, explain to and those, I don't know how those this, of us in the, in yeah, the real world yeah. what an I, insider is. I'm not is. sure how this happened, but Robert was probably my first insider, and that's an individual who's responsible when certain people come to the hotel, that they make sure that they take care of you from the time you get off the plane to the time you go back home. They just want to make sure your experience is straight. They put a treadmill or elliptical in your room. Whatever you need, they make sure you have it so that your uh, your stay is whatever. They do not have an insider at the Best West. <laughs> I, I, I can confirm that. And that's why they're the Best West, and they need to step up their game and get inside. So my boy Rob been with me for a while. So he's prepared at the uh, uh, Caesar's Palace. We got dinner that night, 
and then he's got her a manicure and a pedicure and a massage during the day. So it's, I didn't do nothing. I'm not going to act like I did nothing, but, you know, it's the perks of having a couple dollars so in the inside. So how do they know you're coming if, like, the insider, like, they just see you pull up in the valet and they like, get an insider. Uh, no, 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 no. You, I stay at hotels pretty frequently. So we've been doing this for so long that every city I go to, there's pretty much a, I stay at a, the same hotel, you know, every time. And we call them and let them know I'm coming or Tay calls them and let them know I'm coming. And so then mm-hmm. what? They just had like Chipotle ready for you. Whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want. A little vegan. Man. No, no, we've never done that before. This is new. Is this is new that we were in Vegas and normally it's this joint with fried chicken, macaroni, the whole nine. So we've never done at Vegas that before. So I didn't even tell Rob that, but we'll we'll figure we'll figure something out. But Valentine's hey, Day, she so shouldn't go. So all of y'all, there. you see what you're shooting for as a speaker, right? Yeah, there it is. When you get an insider, yeah. you know you've officially arrived. So. Um, well, it's a lot of other stuff to tell you arrive. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, uh, no, I, I'm going to need an I got to be careful, y'all. We what on live. Got? I'm getting live text. Definitely got to get at least flowers and a card. I'm getting oh, live yeah. text. Oh, like, this Nikki is dangerous. Doing li- oh, Lord have mercy. Well, tell whoever that is to don't make suggestions. Go buy it and give <laughs> right. it to him. I'll, I'll so send you know my address. Right, yeah, you know? there we go. Yeah, no, I'm uh, no, I'm going to figure something out. You know, I try to come with it. I will say this. The cruise is right around the corner. Mm. And so then, I'm, but like my <laughs> wife kills me because like she put a little damper on the whole cruise the other day because she was like, I was like, man, I'm excited about the cruise. You excited? She was like, I don't know. Wow. I was like, wait, mm. what? Wow. And she was like, is this a work cruise? Or are you? I was like, I got a little work, work. but we're gonna (laughs) gonna play too. So hopefully I'll uh, yeah be able to do something there. But I'm definitely gonna come with something on Valentine's Day, and I suggest that everybody who has a significant other, no matter what they say, (laughs) right? Because you you can have a wife like mine who just like, oh, it's not that big a deal. Let you not show up with something. It's going down. Um, All right, let's jump into uh, the podcast and kind of what we talked about and. E, you said something the other day, and I was just like, wow, I didn't even think about it like that. And I, I kind of let you explain it and take it from here, but you said there's a difference between your truth and the truth. And I was like, I was thinking about it in, in a few different contexts, but I'll let you explain and kind of like what you meant and what you talked about. Then we'll also talk about what you talked about um, in Atlanta at Take Control, but kind of explain why you said that and what was going through your mind when you talked about that. Yeah, so when I, when, when I was in school, I, I mean, like I said, y'all know I'm not, you know, really into that. But the big thing that they stress in the dissertation was you have to be able to prove that the work that you do is not you. Like, you might think everybody can do it, but you have to prove or not prove that your theory can work with or without you. Right. And so that was big. And I didn't know what they was talking about at first. I'm like, for sure, I'm doing anybody can do it. But as you start, you know, doing your doing your work or whatever, you start realizing like, yo, some of this might be personality, you know, and some of it could be theory. I'm not really sure. But in that process, what I learned when people make a mistake and I'm speaking to like not just speakers, but entrepreneurs all over the world, you have an idea in your head of what's sweet. And then there's really what's sweet. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real. And, I, and to me, when I was in school, I was like, okay, I understand what they're saying. And that's the disconnect. And here's the thing that's so funny. If you could take your feelings out of it, like, yo, humans got a lot of feelings. You know what I'm saying? It's weird. It's like your feelings going to get you in trouble. The truth is not going to get you in trouble, right? So for me, as not in this podcast, but just in general, I tell people all the time, I've discovered if you want to make six figures, there are certain things that you have to do. If you want to make seven figures, there's certain things you have to do. There's nothing around it. Like, you can't get around it. And so, especially, you know, with people that I'm close to, you'll hear them complaining, you'll hear them talking. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm not trying to be funny. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get the world to understand your truth, and they're not going to understand your truth. You have to find out what truth is and line up to truth. And once you line up to truth, I'm telling you, it's the easiest thing to do. But for so long, I was on that. I, I'm not even going to talk about what I was, what I was on. It, we, it too, take too long. But now you know what I'm on? When I go to a school, to the principal, what do you need? That's it. It don't make a difference what I want to talk about, what I'm skilled at. It doesn't matter. 
When I walk into school, here's their unique problem. Can you handle it or not? Can you fix it or not? Right. And so I just hear a lot of people. We spend a lot of time with people. You trying to convince me. Uh, and that's what I love about Chris. A gorilla is a gorilla. You can't try to make it. I'm, so let me just show you all real quick in my home. I want to show you all something. My wife would be like, turn here, turn there. I'm like, yo, like, yo, friend, I'm just, I'm a grown man. Like, at some point, I want to be able to, for real, I just want to be able to turn where I want to turn. Without your navigation. For real, I just want to be able to turn where I want to turn. You know, and if I get, if I miss the street, I miss the street. It ain't like, you don't make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? But when Chris gave me the assessment, I was like, yo, don't ever argue with your girl again. She has a need to control. Like, that's in her DNA. She has to be in control. You don't have to be in control. I don't. I don't have to be in control. I'm not tripping. Now, if I'm not in control, I'm just going to chill. I'm not going to get 120. I'm just going to chill, let you do what you do. I'm going to sit here and let you do what you do, and you tell me what you want me to do, I'll do it. But with my wife, she has to be in control. And we used to fight because I'm like, okay, I want the purple sheets. And I sat there, Chris, one day, and I said to myself, you don't care if the sheet's purple, blue, or orange. You just want to be in control sometimes because you feel like she always in control, but you really don't want to be in control. You just don't like the fact that she's always in control. Right. You feel me? But you don't need to be in control. So release the release it. Let it go and always let her be in control. And bro, since I done, bro, I'm talking about <laughs> she gets so happy. <laughs> she's so happy, Chris, with the control boy, you know? And so it was like I was living a lie, though. I, I wanted to do something that she was doing. You feel me? Because I felt like you shouldn't be able to do this all the time. It, it should be a, it's a marriage. It should be a partnership. How do you always get to decide where we go, whatever? And then I just said, just sit back. Because there's a few times that she doesn't know. And in those times, you could be in control. So she never know where she want to eat. So here's the, ch here's the chance to be in control. We're going to Chipotle. Bottom line, we're going to Chipotle. And whether you like it or not, we're going because you don't know where you want to go. You know, so for real, Chris, uh, I wish we had hours for me to break this down. Maybe it needs to be a session. But today, Eric Thomas stopped speaking about what Eric Thomas wanted to speak about. And Eric Thomas realized what it takes to be the next Tony Robbins, what it takes to be the next Les Brown, the next whatever, once I realized what they were doing and made up in my mind, I'm going to do that, then bro, I blew up and I never have a problem with gigs. I never have a problem in my house with my own children. Once I realized this is their personality, this is who they are, you're not going to be able to change that. Just uh, what, is, what is the word I'm looking for? Play into who they are. For real, I, I heard, what's her name? Maya said something and I felt Maya, she a gorilla. Uh, and I'm going to have to work with her. <laughs> um, but she said, don't clap. She does not, she don't, she doesn't clap for fish that yeah. swim. And I'm like, yo, I feel you. That's some gorilla stuff. I feel you. <laughs> but there are some fish that if you're gonna be cool with them, you're gonna have to clap with them when they swimming. I know you don't feel like you need to do that, but there's just some fish. If you're gonna have a good relationship with them, they're gonna need some clapping every now and then. And so if you're gonna go that route, you probably only going to be with gorillas for the rest of your life. You feel what I'm saying? Or on your on a solo for the rest of your life. But if you want to have healthy relationships, then at some point you are going to have to. And so I find myself clapping now um, <laughs> for certain fish because that's what they need, bro. And, and here again, I want to say it the way C said it. That is their truth. I can't change that truth. They need clapping for, and there's nothing wrong with clapping for them. It ain't going to kill me to do it. Right. So I clap for them and I don't know how, but I see them swim even. <laughs> they go even faster and they start twirling and doing stuff and their colors come out. And so I'm like, yay, fish, yay, fish. That's they truth. How do you how do you go about, I guess, finding that truth or being in tune enough to know whose truth is the truth or what is the truth and, and kind of what is in your own head? Because I think sometimes for all of us, right, like ego and other things get involved and you see people all the time and they're not bad people. It's just like maybe nobody ever told them or they're not exposed to it. Like you have to search out truth, right? Like we don't, like we're born 
and, and put in a system that kind of gives you what you think the truth should be or what the truth is, right? Like somebody who grew up in a, you know, I grew up Catholic, you know what I'm saying? We just grew up with our truths. Like I never questioned like, oh, why do we grow up Catholic? Why do we go to mass? Why do we do communion? Like it was just kind of given to me. So I followed that, you know, system, right? And so for anybody who, you know, grows up in a system, I think your truth is the, the, the or inherently your truth is going to be what you've been given. And so what you're kind of talking about is stepping outside of that and finding the actual truth. And maybe it's what you've been believing, but maybe it's not. But how do you like kind of make your mind go to that other place where you can actually seek out what other people's truths are? Moose is here and, and, and I want Moose to come up here just in a few minutes and talk about, you know, the dreamers, right? The DACA, you know what I mean? Like that's a different truth for him than for somebody else. You know what I'm saying? So how do you seek out that truth um, not only for yourself, but just in a, in a worldly perspective as well. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, and, and here's the deal. I'm going to be honest with you. See, I don't think you ever really seek out the truth. This may sound weird to people. I don't think you ever seek out the truth for you because you already believe you're true. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think you ever seek out truth for you. I think when you seek out truth, it's because you've come to a place where you want to be in healthy, wholesome relationships. You, you, you know, and so I find there are two types of people. One group, they just want to be right, and that's all that's important to them. I've grown up watching males in my family. They just wanted to be right. They don't necessarily have good relationships with their spouses, with their kids, with the community, but they feel good about the fact that they're right. Nothing has changed for them, but they feel good. They're right. Everybody else is wrong. And then I think there's another group. They get tired of losing. You know what I'm saying? That group gets tired of losing, and for me, I, get, I got tired of people saying, um, I'm only going to pay you $20,000 to speak, $30,000 a speak, because I knew the truth. I sat down with Les Brown. He told me the truth, 50 to 100K. And I was like, well, that's not my truth. I'm only getting 20. That's not my truth. You know, I'm just saying, that's not, so I'm doing something wrong. So I could either just go, keep going and busting my head up against the wall and going and doing 10 20s or do what I need to do so I can get 100. For real, I could keep busting my head up against the wall and getting five 20s and making what the dude making, or I could do one gig and get 100. And so I sat back and said, Eric, what's your truth? Your truth is you like speaking to your people and your people ain't paying that kind of money. Mm. Bottom line, that's who you want to talk to. You want to talk to the little kids at the school who are in second grade and you want to cheer them on, but the school system not paying for kids. They don't pay money for kids. Now they may pay for teachers, they may pay for principals, the reality is you don't have the information to talk to teachers because you ain't been a leader long enough to know what you need to say to leaders. So you need to go study. My wife, I'm, listen, I can't say it because we're on the podcast. Let me see how I can say this. I won't say it the right way. She I'll might be watching. Quest. Be careful. Let me, let me say it like this, Quest. There was a time in my life, Quest, where there were things that I wanted from my wife that I couldn't, that my wife was just like, yo, for real, I'm not on that. Like, for real, I'm not on that. I'm telling y'all now, my wife is the one saying, like, yo, for real, I, you, you not coming with it. Like, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to, you too tired to do this. My wife is like, yo, for real, I'm trying to, and I'm like, whoa, that was me 10 years ago. Like, now she on the other end on everything. There's never enough time. I'm, I'm, I'm too tired at night. Like, my girl, like, yo, you need to come with it. Like, I'm finally everything you want, and now you ain't ready for this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm sitting there tripping like, yo, how did this happen? You know, but you know how it happened? It happened because at one point I was living my truth, and I was only concerned about me. And then I got to a point where my whole life revolved around, what do I need to do to make you happy? And now I'm like, yo, I could have got this version 10 years ago. Yeah, you could have. But you were so focused on being right. You wanted mm. to be right. Yep. You wanted to be like, yo, you can't, what up, what up? now, you are, so now she's like, you going where? I'm like, game change. How long you going to be at the game changes? And I'm like, I'm a, I don't know. I got to do a podcast. I got to do whatever. <laughs> she's like, all right, well, let no. I called yesterday. She was shopping. She was like, I was like, you ready? She's like, I was ready 10 minutes ago. I was like, when you want me to leave? She's like, you could have been gone. So whenever you get here, I'm here waiting on you. You feel me? It wasn't like that before because I was on my truth. And now I'm on our truth. I'm just going to be real. I hate losing my son. We weren't talking the way that I want to talk. And what we went on one accord. My truth is I want to be on one accord with my kids. I want to be on one accord with my wife. So if I got to change and I got to be the only one to change, I don't care no more. I just don't want to lose no more. 
You feel me? And so I don't think people ever discover truth for self. I think you always discover truth because you want to keep going to the next level. Maybe I'm just wired like that, but I don't like being at one level for five years. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not, I'm okay with whatever level I'm on, but I want to keep growing. And I think the only way you keep growing is by, is by getting a new truth. And real quick, I'm sorry. There was a young man who said to me, he said, E, I, I, I'm my enemy. I emotionally get in my way. And I was like, yo, bro, maybe you need to study the Muslim faith. I was like, look, you pray five times a day, it's hard to stay in the funk. <laughs> I'm like, bro, bro, you ain't got no routine, bro. If you pray five times a day at one of those prayers, you should be able to come out your funk. But I said, the reason why you in a funk is because you don't have a routine. So once you get in your funk, you stay in all day because you in your funk all day. But if you had five things to do during the day, you can't be in the funk and do those things. So the reason why I'm never in a funk, because my truth tells me my flesh shouldn't be controlling me in the first place. Mm. My truth tells me that my feelings shouldn't tell me what to do. I should be running my feelings. How is my feelings telling Eric what to do? My feelings are a part of me. They're not me. And so when my feelings start tripping, my truth says, stop. Go get centered. Get your spirit back. And then let's move forward. My old truth was, oh, woe is me. My daddy wasn't in my life. My mama didn't tell me who my daddy was. I'm a black man from Detroit, high school dropout. That was my truth, and that's why I lived the life I lived. But when my truth was, yo, I'm running this, and I control how much money I make, how happy I am, what number speaker I am in the world. Everything changed when my truth changed. Hmm. Yeah, when, every time we got live studio audience, Carl and I just... You just yeah. watch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I forgot we was on the podcast. I thought you were speaking. I was just looking. Uh, what's your truth, Carl? <laughs> you feel me? Carl, like, look, I just got back from our bed, I ain't got time for this. Right, that, that is the truth. Right, that is uh, the truth. No, I think... And I, and I think that's one of the most incredible things, you know, when I, when I look at E, you know, like... People are who they are. Right. Like, my mama tell you, like, I'm pretty much probably within, like, a percentile, uh, a percent of wh exactly who I was in, like, kindergarten. You know what I mean? Like, people don't change much. I'm pretty sure, Sean, you've been kind of an alpha <laughs> flamingo <laughs> your whole life. You know what I'm saying? And so people don't change much. And so when I hear what you're saying and you're talking, and we know you got rebaptized and that whole thing, but, like, do you understand how hard it is to change when you're almost 50? Like, do you know, like, I know some grown folk, and I always just, like, leave them alone, because they not... Yeah. Ain't nothing about to change. Nothing about to change. Yeah. Like, they just, you know, long. even if they could change the behavior for, like, a week uh. or so, like, you talking about people been who they've been since birth, yeah. and then here you come in trying to save them, and I'll be real, that's one of the most impressive things about Kendall, yeah. right? Like, Kendall, like, you, you see Kendall now, you think Kendall been like this for, like, the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. Like, Kendall, you were how old when, when you kind of came? Hold saw on, the light. Hold on, come get the mic, Kendall. Yeah, yeah come on, yeah, come on, grab it. Yeah, get the come mic. Close, man. When I saw the light, mm -hmm. uh, it shined in my face. I was about 44, wow. 45. So, so wow. Kendall was 44, 45 years old. Wow. Now, I didn't even know this, but you, you kind of start seeing, like, okay, this is not the path I want to go down. What were you doing before that? And then that 44, 45 cold turkey, you kind of made this change. What was going on before that, and then what happened? I was losing. Mm -hmm. I was losing. I was drinking. I'm talking about heavy. I didn't even know I was an alcoholic. I just, in the past year, started saying I was an alcoholic. I just thought I just drank too much, because, you know, you drank on the Oh, food. no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so I was drinking, smoking, wilding out, chasing. You know, just not, you know, you have those moments where you look in the mirror, I would be drunk, looking in the mirror and saying, you, there's, there's more, like, you, there's more for you to do. And just then I got sick and I was like, you get to the point, you say I want to kill myself, but I didn't care if I wasn't here. Mm. And then I'm looking at my family just, boom, you know, divorce and boom, just the kids ain't right, boom, everything just falling. And I, you know, I think I told my, my G-men this morning, I've been looking for that something, a man, you know, that, that guidance, that guide my whole life. So throughout my life, I've always had opportunities to be in circles. And I promise you, I said one day, I said, you know how you get to that point, you'd be like, Lord, if you just mm -hmm. give me one more. And when I, I didn't think I was going to get another opportunity. Mm -hmm. And when I saw the opportunity came, when you came, mm 
mm-hmm. I was like, boom, got it. And I never looked back. Yeah, no, and Kendall came to me and was like, yo, I need to coach with you, bruh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. And I didn't even know, like, he was so disciplined and structured when he came to me. I was like, I thought you had been. Yeah. So he would tell me his stories of, like, drinking and all of that. And I thought he was always talking about, like, 20 years ago. He was like, bro, this is like six months ago. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. But to change at that age, you know, and, and then to, to kind of use E and, like, hear E and B and allow his words to help you change, like, what? what had to go through your mind? Because like I said, most people don't stop drinking in their 40s. Like, that's not something you do just cold turkey, like, all right, cool, I'm done. Or most people don't stop, you know, um, committing adultery or whatever's going on in their 40s. Like, that's not something, like, that's usually a learned behavior. It's a staple. Yeah, exactly, yeah, it's a, it's a staple. So like, what were the actual, what was the actual process of, of kind of that cleansing or whatever? I found my truth. Like, mm-hmm. I knew my truth was there was more. And that process was, so, it was one day I had called my wife up. I had went to my man's house. I called my wife up. We was drinking. And I told her, I said, I ain't, I ain't coming home. Because I had caught a DUI before. And I said, I'm not going to drive home drunk and catch another one. So I called and I said, uh, I ain't coming home. And she, you know, just got quiet. She ain't go off. She ain't go in. She just got quiet. And something inside of me was like, mm-mm. And so I just, I got quiet and I was like, you okay? And she, you know, you could feel the density oh. on oh, coming through the phone. And she was like, you I said, you all right? And she said, mm-hmm. Ooh, uh, mm-hmm. She didn't say, yeah. She just said, mm-hmm. Ooh, uh, Scorn woman. And, and here's the <laughs> that's bad That's worse thing. to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, that's worse yeah. to know. Yeah, I take a note. And yeah. the crazy thing was, I wasn't doing anything but drinking. And it got so bad, I kept drinking and couldn't get drunk. Mm. And that was when I was like, so I, I stayed the night. And at 5 a.m., I got up. And now, we've done this before. I've done it before. This is the last time I'm going to drink. I ain't doing that. I took the pack of cigarettes, threw them out the window. This is the last time. But that time, it was my why. It was because I knew, like, I was in the garage, drunk, talking to her. And I kept saying to myself, I ain't got but so much further to go before it's a wrap. And I lose everything. Mm -hmm. And so on the way home, I made a decision. I said, this is it. And I got home. But I didn't say anything to anybody. I just stopped. And I waited a few months to go by, and we were out one day, and she was like, you ain't drinking? I was like, no. And then some more time went by. She said, I ain't seen you drink in a while. And I said, I'm trying to stop. That was the accountability. Mm. And I told my kids, told my son, if you see me drink, and check me. And then some more time went by. My wife was like, I ain't seen you drink. I said, I don't drink. Mm. Because I, got, I made a decision, I got the accountability, and then I started to believe yeah, it. Yeah. No, that's incredible, and, and, and um, the reason we, the reason, listen, the reason you guys are here, the reason the Game Changers are here, um, Kendall and Kansas have a lot to do that with that, but Kansas was already doing his thing. I kind of helped him go to that next level, but you're talking about somebody who never really had even given a keynote speech um, and came to me, he was referred to me through the barber shop, right? Like the cats in the shop was like, yo, X used to own this shop. They called him X, they were like, X used to own this shop. And they, they know what E and I do, and everybody rock with E at the shop. And they were like, yo, we ain't saying he going to be as nice as E. <laughs> they was like, but man, he got a gift. Like, he would start talking. Even when he was drinking and doing all that, like, he would start talking. The whole shop would, like, go quiet, and everybody would just listen to him for an hour straight. So he's got the gift. And so I was able to take him and, and kind of hone that gift and turn that into now a, a brand with Grindation and what he's doing. And then, you know, going from having never really given a speech to a contract with the Chicago Bears and speaking to the Chicago Bears, incredible, man. So y'all give it up for Kendall, man. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you, as you can see, we got some incredible people. You heard E talk about Chris and um, Kansas is back there, just amazing human beings that have been with us for a long time. And I want to bring somebody else up. It was funny because we talked about this last night. I think Mia and Moose probably been with us the longest out of anybody in this room. Moose, you remember the first year? What was the year when you met us? 2012. 2012, and you? 2012, so we had to figure out what month to see who gets the trophy. <laughs> um, but you guys been rocking with us for a minute. Uh, Moose, if you could come on up, man. Give a hand to Moose. Um, I don't, certain people you meet in your life and they just have an incredible spirit. And everybody, you guys may not be able to see them in listener land, but everybody's nodding their head when I said that as Moose came up. Um, I don't think it's possible to meet a kinder human being than Moose. And 
from 2012 when we met, I, and I think in New York, right? Yep. Um, Moose came to one of the events and he grabbed me, pulled me to the side, told me how much he had changed his life and the message and all of that. I think I gave him my number right then and there. Yep. And um, Moose and I have been connected on the text and everything since then. And, you know, he would come out to, you know, um, events occasionally and I would always recognize him. We would always talk. And then he said he wanted to get involved with Game Changers when we had P7D. And I was super excited to have you just because of your presence and all of those things. Um, But I want to kind of fast forward some of that and get to some of the issues because what you're going through um, and and we got super love for you as a family member in this community. the, the DACA uh, program, you, you're a dreamer yourself. Uh, explain to us uh, and the people in listening land who maybe have heard of it, but don't exactly know what's going on. Um, and then, and yeah, just kind of run us through where, where we're at with that right now. Yeah, so the DACA program is a, a law that was passed in 2012 that basically protected people who entered the country illegally as children. So whether you entered through the southern border or you entered with a visa with your parents and that visa expired, you all fell under the same umbrella. So because you didn't have the proper paperwork, you couldn't go and get a driver's license. You couldn't get a job if you wanted to. You were in school, but if you graduated, you couldn't get a job. You couldn't get a driver's license. You got through high school. Most of us don't come from wealthy backgrounds, but you don't qualify for financial aid. So you're trying to live out the American dream. You're American in every way except that piece of paper is holding you back. So 2012, when DACA was released, that was literally our ticket to the light. Now granted, it came with some restrictions. It said you can't leave the country and come back. It said you can't qualify for financial aid, but you could get a driver's license. You could now be authorized to work. And for a lot of us, that was like, that's all I need. I don't need to go back home because I haven't been there since I was seven years old. This is my home. Mm -hmm. So now, you, like you said, you fast forward to September 5th of last year, administration canceled that program. And they said, you got six months to get a solution or you're all up for deportation again. And this time, now that we have you in the system, because you entered the system, mm-hmm. we know exactly where you are. So we can send that notice right to your house, give you two weeks to report, or we're coming to get you. <coughs> so now you're going to go back to a country that you don't know much about, you don't read and write the language, whatever the case may be, and you gotta start all over after you've invested your entire life here. So that's really what the program about, that's what dreamers represent. And I love that he said, speak your truth, because that was something that, from day one, I came out with that tagline. I said, okay, I'm gonna speak my truth. And I said it in a different sense, because the media and people who, whether you voted right or left, I don't think that's what it matters or what it comes down to, but, If the media is telling you that we are drug dealers, that we're gang members, that we're MS-13, and in my case, you're a terrorist, right? But I'm a business owner. I'm a college graduate. I'm the first in my family to do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, come on, move. Like, I've, I've had no guidance and I got here. And now you're telling me I'm not worthy because of a piece of paper? So you came, for, tell us, so you came here at six or seven years old? Seven years old, yep. Um, and it hasn't always been easy for you. Tell, tell us what happened, uh, if you're from New York, tell us what happened in 9-11 for your, your personal experience. Yeah, so, so where I went to school, I went to school in uh, Astoria, Queens. And from our school window, you can literally see that entire New York City skyline. So you can see the Empire State Building, the Chrysler Building, and back then the Twin Towers. And one of my friends... Uh, I just remember the moment because it, it literally, like what they call the matrix, everything stopped. Uh, he raised his hand and he said, uh, Miss Marilitis, the Twin Towers are on fire. And at that moment, I didn't really know like, what the buildings represent. Like, I had still been there three or four years. And he said that, and I can pinpoint in my life that that was literally the day my life changed. Because not only are you an undocumented immigrant, but now you are a Muslim who was living in New York City as the city is trying to bounce back from the biggest attack in the world or in the country. So now everyone is looking at anyone who's Muslim as a terrorist. Mm -hmm. And And you were how old at the time, sorry? I was 11 years old. Okay. And and just how did that feel? 
what, what kind of weight did you carry with you? That's a lot at, at an 11 year old, right? Like yeah. you're 11 years yeah. old and people are looking at you. What kind of comments were you getting? Like, what did you have to go through? Yeah, I mean, that that was like you became the, the joke of the group. Like at any time, anyone could come up to you and be like, oh, don't sit next to him. He has a bomb. Like that was that was the go to move. Mm. So it was easy to be the joke of the party. Uh, you know, like the, just like using the religion out of context. And I was, and, and, and I think that's one of the main reasons why I rock with E because you don't understand, I met E in a church. Mm. Like, I, I've been telling you this forever, like it, it's bigger than just a message. Like I'm a Muslim man, walked into a church and got closer through my, to my religion because of your message. Mm. Like wow. that, this is why I'm connected. Like. I, and I always say thank you for that reason. Like I, I'm, literally, that's the main thing. Why? And and during his message that day, he used that as a as an idea. He said, uh, somebody came up to me, said I'm Muslim. So your question to him was, well, do you pray five times a day? And I'm like, wow. Like look at the context of the story. I'm here now. He's saying that I don't pray five times a day. But I can't use the fact that oh, but people called me a terrorist and people said my religion was this and use that as my excuse to not get better. So I said, all right, well, I'm going to get, I'm going to start praying. I'm, I'm going to follow the religion the way it's supposed to be. Absolutely, the way it's supposed to be, absolutely. Truth. truth. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the truth. Um, so, so then you were able to, through all of this, um, get yourself to school yeah. and get in school uh, at, was it Al, Alma. At, Alma, Alma College, yeah. Alma um, in Michigan. Shout out to Alma. You, probably, you guys probably don't know. You're in Michigan. Yeah. Um, and then you were able to graduate. And tell the people, uh, because one of the, one of the uh, things that they're saying against the Dreamers is they're taking jobs. Right. You actually have how many people that work for you? Uh, just last night, we had 27 on staff. So you Y'all can clap for that. So you created that. So not only is he not taking jobs, creating. Moose is creating jobs. So you got 27 people on staff. Um, a lot of people, that, that, that was a, you got a lot of reasons to have some excuses. You got a lot of reasons to have some Yes. Self-pity, kind of yeah. what you just talked yeah. about. Uh, why, why do you keep following the American dream when America has essentially, in some ways, told you that you're not worthy of the American dream? Because there's actual naturalized citizens who they've been through some stuff and they gave up on their dream. And they're like, this ain't for me. This ain't happening for me. And I can't make it. And I can't this and I can't that. And they've told you, you can't have a proper driver's license. You can't, you know, get a loan from the bank. Like all of these things that we take for granted as, you know, um, Americans who were born here, and yet you've still been able to make it, become an entrepreneur, and employ 27 people. Tell the people how, Moose. <laughs> Truthfully, it's not about me. Mm. I think back about my mother who sacrificed them because she couldn't get a proper job. She decided to just beg pretty much to work at a grocery store. Mm. supermarket, bagging groceries where people left their tips, quarters, whatever change was left, combining that after 8, 10, 12 hours wow. to make dollars to keep my butt in school. Wow. Mm. I think wow. about my father who migrated here at 39 years old. I mean, you talk about somebody starting over at 39 years old, coming to a country that you don't speak the language, you don't know where you're going to work, you don't know how it's going to go, but you're willing to take a sacrifice because your little boy is seven years old. So I think about those sacrifices and I say, wow, as a matter of fact, my father passed away when I was a freshman in high school, uh, lost his life to a massive heart attack, and we sent him back home. Because of my situation, I have yet to go back to see his resting place. Mm. But he came here for us to have a better life. I don't, will not stop until I can accomplish that. Now, if the administrators blow the whistle and they get me out, I'll let that be their call, but I won't throw in the towel because things got yeah, hard for like me. That. I don't yeah. throw in the towel. And um, I, I want to thank you for sharing the story. Tell, tell the people out here, we got, you know, we got a few people that listen to the podcast, I think. Let us know how we can help. Let people know how they can get involved. If, and, and there's how many, how many dreamers are there? There's about 800,000. 800,000. Um, and so this is... I mean, as we go, you know, we live our daily lives and all of us will go back to our homes and things like this. This is our brother right here. And this is a, a family member who's been with us, you know, for, for a long time now. 
and he's got bigger things yeah. on his mind. And so we don't want to leave here and we go back to our lives and, you know, just kind of forget about it. How can we stay involved with the movement? How can we help? What can we do um, to, 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 to see that these dreamers get the proper citizenship, to see that they get the proper help? How can we be involved in your cause? Because uh, most and I talked yesterday and I was like, this is your lane, yes, right? Sir. Like this, this advocacy piece that you have, you guys hear, you know, the passion and, and, and dedication he speaks with on this topic. Um, this, is, this is what you need to be doing. He was featured on CNN, uh, featured a special on him, uh, which was incredible. If you didn't get a chance to see it, check it out. Um, but how can we get involved with the movement? How can, you know, we stay with you so that, you know, when you go back to New York and we all go back to our homes, it's not over today, but we can actually fight the fight with you. Yeah, so right now there's a big push uh, in Congress where they say about 80% of Americans across the country support a DREAM Act. A DREAM Act is basically a pathway to citizenship for dreamers. Mm -hmm. So there's a big push in Congress, but the two parties haven't been able to decide and just come to terms on, okay, this is what we'll do, we'll give some of this, and we'll, we'll say, okay, let's just let, let's leave them here. They're contributing to the economy. and. One way to really get involved is just call your Congress member and urge them and let them know that you support a Clean Dream Act. Mm. Uh, that's one way to do it. And just show your support. I mean, a lot of people, again, you know, whether you vote right or left, they think that all dreamers are this way. And I can't say that all 800,000 have never committed a crime, but there's not one race, religion, or somebody in this country who has 100%, <laughs> yeah. oh, we're all good. Yeah. So. Again, there's a system in place. You've got to have a clean record to qualify for this. You've got to meet certain requirements. So we are keeping the country safe. And as I said, we are Americans in every way, and we want to keep contributing to this great country. Where can they follow you just social media-wise? There's people out here probably hearing you on the podcast who want to, you know, see your face, you know, maybe contribute, you know, in, in any way they can. Give them your social media. Let them know where to find you. Yep. I'm on Instagram primarily at Mustafa underscore Gonum. And that's spelled M-O-S-T-A-F-A -A underscore Gonum, G-H-O-N-I-M. Y'all give it up for Moose, man. What's up, brother? Love you, man. Moose. Um, with the time we have left, I think we were going to do uh, Q&A. Is that cool? All right, before we jump into that really quick, guys, this segment is brought to you by RX Bar. RX Bar started in 2013 with the simple mission of calling out the BS on all the other protein bars on the market. There wasn't a bar out there that wasn't full of artificial ingredients, fillers, preservatives, and just general crap. So they created the RX Bar using simple, clean ingredients that each serves a specific purpose. It's simply like eating three egg whites, two dates, and six almonds with no BS. The egg whites are for protein, the dates to bind, and nuts for texture. It turns out that real food ingredients taste really good. You can actually taste the cacao, the real fruit, the spices like sea salt. Whether you like sweet or savory, chocolate or fruit flavors, there's an RX bar for you. They come in 11 delicious flavor varieties and are gluten-free, soy-free, and dairy-free. RX bars are great for many different occasions such as breakfast on the go, a snack in the office, or even a pre-post workout snack. And actually that's how I used it guys. We had a lot of events going on this weekend as you know and I grabbed, uh, we got the box this week and like they said there's like 11 different flavors. There's a mixed berry, peanut butter, chocolate, sea salt, um, the coconut chocolate, there's a bunch of them and the one I, I, the immediate one I grabbed was that berry, I'm a berry guy. So the mixed berry man, I took that thing out and it literally was my breakfast for the gods. We were on our way to the Take Control event. And honestly, the bar was a little more dense than I anticipated initially, my initial thought. But just getting into it, man, the taste was pretty good. Um, I smashed it and it held me over, guys. So honestly, that berry one was my favorite. I tasted the chocolate. The peanut butter is pretty good, too. Definitely smashed it, guys. So for 25% off your first order, visit rxbar.com forward slash success and enter the promo code success at checkout. Once again, for 25% off your first order, visit rxbar.com slash success and enter the promo code SUCCESS at checkout. So we want to open this up to our, 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 our beautiful colleagues here at Game Changers to go ahead and ask some questions. I see the first hand up. She ready. Mia. She uh, ready. 
is in the building. We met Mia in, I wonder if that was the same event. Mm -mm. No? No, it wasn't mine the was the story, the Slam article. Yeah, I remember, but then, it wasn't at the same? The no, event, that was at the theater, right? The theater, yeah. The theater okay, was 2013. Okay, so yep, that was after, so Moose, yeah, yeah. Moose won. Moose, that Moose. was after, <laughs> that, was, that was the event we did with Rondell. Remember that? Yep, that was, so Moose was, uh, yeah. mine Moose was the, a Rondell event, too. All right, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. Well, in 2013. The second one, On my though. birthday, yeah. Yep, oh, got you. Oh, in 2013, yeah, praise my God. birthday, praise God. Yeah. Um, meant to be. So yeah. my question is, I compare my, um, where I am right now to, and just tell me if this is fair or foul, right or wrong, right, to, I heard that the CEO of Under Armour, like when he started, that he took out a, uh, and this is live, but anyway, he took out like a, like, or he used like a $15,000 like line of credit or whatever, something like that to like, you know, make his t-shirts, whatever, from his grandmother, right, whatever. Yeah. So that's how he started. So. Is it fair for, and this could be, you know, your truth, right? Yeah. This might be yeah. my truth, you know, yeah. truth. Um, for somebody to do the same thing with their own personal growth hmm. and personal development, right? Hmm. Like, would you, would you say, let's say theoretically, somebody wanted hmm. to say, you know what, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take out a $16,000 line of credit to do my personal development. Would you say that is a, you know, good idea or a bad idea, or, you know, I can you just yeah. give some advice on that? Yeah, I love it. I, I'd say this, an investment is an investment. I think one of the challenges, though, is when you're borrowing somebody else's money, you have to make sure that you are as committed as you would be if it was your money. I don't find that the average human takes your money <laughs> and value it the way it would be if that was their money. But if you know for sure you're going to take that money and use it as, as if it was what you've earned and you're going to apply everything you learn, then I don't think it's a problem with that. Uh, yeah, most humans, though, you're right. Yeah, most humans can't pull that when off. You borrow it. It's like, eh. Yeah. Why you see people dropping out of college? They got 400000 in student loan debt, and they still Somebody dropping out of college. Money. It, it the money ain't money. real. It's yeah, monopoly money. Yep. You know what I mean? So you got to be careful. Yeah, so um, my question is for all of you guys, um, you know, you guys being like a smaller company and then growing and evolving and seeing the, the brand growing. For those, you know, watching, wanting to be entrepreneurs, what are some things, you know, I guess for me, I'm asking, you know, what do you need to do, as you always say, to get that dog, to be able to get that advantage, you know, to be a small company, but to, you know, have the influence that you guys have to be like grow as a big brand? What would you say the other day at the conference about being an entrepreneur? Oh, yeah. Repeat that line. You remember what you said? Which one about the influence? Impact? No, if you want to make money, if you're just trying to make money, get oh, yeah. a job. Yeah, if, you, if you're just trying to make money, get a job. If you're trying to take care of people, then get a business. But if you're not trying to be responsible for other people's lives, then I would just hustle up, make some, make some bread. Yeah, yeah. but let me, yeah. and let me say this to you, Mike. Be careful of like the word big and huge and all of those things like we all have and Josh really is the one who helped me see it like in terms of even the company like the solar company we run is a very small company very lean in terms of how many employees we have all of those things but it is a money making machine right and so you wouldn't the world doesn't see it as big nobody you guys don't know it. you never heard of it you never been to the website. Right. But it but it does very well. And so sometimes people will equate big with lots of money. And that's not necessarily the case. It's not how much you make it's how much you keep. So what's the difference if Carl e and I make a million dollars with three of us or make 10 million dollars with 20 employees? It doesn't really change your lifestyle a whole lot. So people think big in terms of like I'm going to have this big company or this big whatever. We always thought big impact. Right. And that was our goal. Right. So that's why we wanted to be big. Not necessarily because we need, like, it, our life would probably be easier if there was, oh, yeah. you know, me, E, Carl, and Josh, and that was it. Like, it would probably be just an easier path because we wouldn't have to deal with a bunch of feelings and a bunch of flamingos and turtles, and, <laughs> right? We wouldn't have to deal with all of that. And so ask yourself, what does big mean for you, right? Big for you might mean, hey, I want to make a half a million dollars a year, work 35, 40 hours a week, and, and chill with my fam. That might be big. And so, but in terms of impact, what allowed us to, to have a great impact was our dedication to it, was having the proper, you know, 
the work ethic, you know, the, the proper way to put it out to the world, all of those things. So just ask yourself what big means for you yes. and then find that group that you can make an impact with and then let everybody else catch the residue. If you're good enough, I tell people all the time, if you're good enough, other people will start um, following you. Mia asked me yesterday, she was like, man, I really want to do this program for brown girls. But everybody's saying, like, don't just pigeonhole yourself and say brown girls. I'm like, forget that. That's who you want to impact. That's who you have a heart for. Mia didn't say it, but we'll say it for her. Mia went to Harvard. 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 She's our Harvard graduate amongst the crew. Harvard. Yeah. And Not she went Harvard. from the hood to Harvard. Yeah. And so she wants to show other young ladies from her community, which happen to be brown, how to do that. And you're not going to apologize for that, right? And so I told her, just run full speed. Now, there's going to be some other girls who may be white, might be Latina, whatever, who are going to eventually come around because greatness doesn't care about your color. Right. Right? It doesn't care. Right. And so I told her, Issa Rae, if anybody knows Issa Rae, Issa Rae went from awkward black girl on YouTube right. to insecure on HBO. And I know it ain't just black people watching Insecure because it's the number one rated show on HBO. Right, right. And so I'm telling you to find that lane of what you want to be big, start small, and if you do small well enough, yeah. it'll become big. Yeah, and I just want to say, oh, go for it, Carl. I was just, no, one small piece is, I don't know if you heard, and CJ alluded to it, he said it a million times, you can't do it by yourself. You ask what to do, you can't do it by yourself. You have to have the people around you. You talked about getting the dog, I'm still not the aggressive dude. Y'all know me. I'm not the dude. I'm, I prefer to be behind the curtain right now. Like, honest to God. But what you've seen, the evolution of just me being around them has changed me as a person. It's making me hungrier. But then together, what we've been able to accomplish, man, we, I'll say plain, we could not have done this without everything you see here. It could not have happened. He was doing it 20 years before us. You see what I'm saying? It could not have happened the way you know it. And we, we can't take credit for it like that. I'm being real. We can't. Like, I, I'm from Barbados. He's from Lansing. I'm talking, our religion's different, our, our geographical, you know, everything's different. I can't take credit for that. But you got to have that right group of people. Well, this is for the listeners. You're already in the right group of people. You already got the support here. But for our listeners, you got to have that support group that's with you, the personalities that you don't have, the animal traits that you don't have. you got to surround yourselves with them because it's not going to happen on your own. Bottom line. Yep. Yeah, and I was just going to say, be careful. And I don't know how this happens, the compare thing. It's a dangerous thing when you start comparing yourself, companies or whatever, right? So I just shared this with, I just shared this with my son the other day. I think I told Score a while back too. I, bruh, I just, I just stayed in the same hotel with the Cavaliers. They don't have hotels for NBA players. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> They don't have hotels for it, so I don't care how much a dude making. 40 mil, 50 mil, they don't have hotels for 50 millionaires. They don't have that. It's the Four Seasons. It's the Ritz Carlton. It's the W. You understand what I'm saying? You don't have, I can buy whatever car people buy, I can buy the car. I don't make $30 million. But if you got a Rolls Royce, I can go buy one. Cash. So people get caught up, and he making 30 mil. You understand the problems that come with $30 million? You know all the fake people that surround you when you're making $30 million? We just talking about fake. I told my son this the other day. I said, man, I'm so grateful I ain't blow up immediately because I got your mom. And the one thing I know about your mom is your mom don't love me for what I got. That's the greatest feeling in the world, bro, to be sleeping with somebody you know ain't down for you because you got something. Now, that might be cute when you're 20. You're a grown man. You don't want people for you because of what you got. My wife was with me when I was homeless. When I ate out of trash cans, I know she down for me. Bottom line, that's love. That ain't no, uh, I was thinking, bro, like for real. Like it ain't no joke. I was coming to church without taking a bath. She wasn't known that, you stink. She saw my potential and that's why I love her. You feel me? So be careful with the comparison. What I love, when I, when they, I was in that room, they asked Warren Buffett, what's the greatest thing about being the richest man in the world? He said, I only work for people I like. He never said nothing about money. He said, I get to work with the people I like. I don't got to work with people I don't like. I was like, unbelievable. He said, the mattress you sleep on, they don't make mattresses for Warren Buffett. I got to go to the movie theater you go to. He like, I go to that movie theater. They don't have a movie theater for Warren Buffett. They, I go to the one y'all go to. What he said, the only difference was. said, the only difference was he has a private jet, right? <laughs> and most people don't have one. But Grant Cardone told me to my face, E, whatever you do, don't buy a jet. Right. He said, don't buy it. It costs too much. The gas, yep. you got to sit. So he said, it costs yep. too much. 
Don't even waste your money on it, bro. That's what that's what they said to me. So so my boys that go private, they are like a Uber. Jared Robin, they, it's like an Uber. They pay so much a month and they pay $25, whatever. Now they got people might be thinking people own them because the way they taking pics, but I'm just saying, don't <laughs> compare yourself. Listen to me, I'm telling y'all the truth. If you want to be rich, try not to make no more than $750,000 that you, that you have save, a right, year. Save. That you save. You, save. you don't want to go in the millions. Because once you start going in the millions, now you got to start helping people. I hate it's, that. it's a whole different hookup. <laughs> no, I'm being real. You know what I'm my, my wife will tell you. I'm gonna take my chances. We get, <laughs> we, we get so many calls from the universities because they know we helped a couple kids. So I get calls every week mm-hmm. for somebody who needs their tuition paid. I get calls every week from family members who car broke down or who need a bro. Do you understand this pressure? It's just a lot of stress making money. I'm just being real. My taxes, I got to make sure everything right. You know why? Because if it's not, you go, bro, you know we go to jail. Wesley Snipes been in jail. Pookie ain't went to jail for tax evasion. Wesley Snipes, why? Because when you make money, you on the radar. And the IRS, they like, oh, nope. Lauren Hill didn't, nope. Sammy Davis Jr., nope. Fred Fox, nope. Did. Bro, it's, it's real. So I'm saying be cautious when you get to the point where you're making 34, and here's the other deal. I ain't met nobody in the NBA or the NFL who made 30, 40, and 80% of them go broke. So I tell people all the time, you might as well wait till you're older to get it, because if you get it when you're too young, what you going to spend it on? Stuff. An uh, insider. Right. <laughs> and, and, hey, and watch this. I'm going to give me an insider. And watch this. You know How did I get an insider? It wasn't through money. It was the stuff I gave away. <laughs> what BB me. saw me, what BB <laughs> said when she saw me at the W. Yo, E, you changed my life. Anything you could do for us. And she wasn't my insider because I wasn't staying at the W. But she was like, whatever you need. And that didn't come from money. That came from all the people I've poured into. So if you want to be rich, be rich in relationships. Because if all you got is money, I'm telling you, you broke, bro. Right. I can call any city anywhere in the country and get a hookup because I'm rich in relationships. So a man with only money, he broke. A man with only, I didn't say nothing wrong with money, but a man that only has money, he's broke. But the person that has rich relationships, and I got that all over the world. I got that all over the world. There's some people with money, they buy themselves. When they go to cities, they go alone. When you have relationships, so don't let, stop comparing. That's the worst thing you could do in the world is look at your neighbor and say, well, he got this and he got that. You don't know the hell he got to go with that. You don't know, you don't know the other stuff that come along with that. So take your hand. I took a hand, bro. Homeless high school dropout father wasn't in there. And I took that hand. And when you looked at me, you thought, bro, you thought I had ace, king, queen. You looked at that. You looking at my face. I'm like, you don't want to lay your hand out, bro. I promise you, you don't. You, I promise you, you don't. And I played the hand that was dealt me. I never asked for another hand. I took the hand that God gave me. I never complained. I never cried. I took the hand that I was given and I played that joker. And when I got and I put and I kept playing it. So play your hand. Big for you might just mean for y'all. And y'all change your city. Y'all change y'all state. That might be big. You don't want, might not want to go this big right here. It's a different big right here. I'm trying to go yeah. insider big. That's my new. I'm still on. I'm still on the insider quest. I ain't thinking about nothing else but the inside. I just want to be able to call at three in the morning, like go give me some Waffle House. Which is probably why it's gonna take them a minute because they don't want to get up at three and do it. You know what I'm saying? Is it His just motives? Fair foul. Only rich people tell you money don't matter. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> They be like, oh, it's all the spirit. You be like, bro, I'm broke. <laughs> I know what you talking about. I need a couple dollars. I'm trying to get an insider and a Rolls Royce. Um, no question. Your I don't even remember what the though. question was, so yeah. hopefully that answered your question. Yeah. Your all right, so check it out. You. First of all, since it is around Valentine's Day, I want to send a shout out to my boo, Vanessa Ardwin. Mm. Because like, yeah, yeah. like Didi, right, right? Hey, because like Didi, she'll cut for me. And that's all, that's all that matters. You, you watching me, you watching me, you watching me. But what you ain't watching is my ride or die on the side. She'll cut you for me. Mm. So, you know, hey, yeah, send a shout out to my baby. Yeah, we met her. Yeah. No joke. Yeah. So, um, be, uh, this, since, this is the success to, since this is the Secret to Success podcast. There you go. 
Um, I would like for y'all to tell us what your version of success is, because people, a lot of people think that it's just money. Insider. Insider. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So what is your idea of, inside of man. success? That's my new favorite movie. Right? The inside man. <laughs> the inside man. Yeah, so what, what is each one of y'all's version of success? Um, you know what? <laughs> I honestly, like, you know, this was a tough last week uh, for my wife. And so, like, I, I'm so happy right now, Sean, like, in my career, where I'm at, like, like Warren Buffett, I ain't got Warren Buffett money, but Warren Buffett say he only work with people he like. Like, I love these dudes. Like, Carl whole family staying at my house, and I'm going to be sad to see them go Wednesday. Like, like, we came home yesterday, his wife, my wife in there, our babies running around. Like, we just hung out. Me and Carl, like, fried up an egg sandwich. Like, we just hanging yeah. out. Wow. Yeah, you can't do that yeah. anymore. Uh, you remember eggs? How they used to taste? <laughs> They're still good. With cheese. Um, you know, and, and you know, our, our baby's running around. And to me, that's success. But what's not success is that every now and then, and very rarely, my wife at work, um, things can, like, all of a sudden go crazy and GE's got their own stuff going on now. She's in finance, so it was tough. And my wife came home at like midnight a couple of nights in a row. And um, it was we were like riding somewhere. I can't even remember, like dinner or something. And I could tell it was just heavy on her. Like my wife is like keeps it, like tries to keep it in. And like she was like, oh, this week's been so tough and stuff like that. And I was like, ooh, we ain't quite arrived yet because my wife's still like stressed out over work. And so to me, you know, success is, is it's not a destination, it's a journey. You know, you, you try to wake up every day and hunt that success. But I think for me, I won't think that I've truly arrived. I joked about the insider, that's one of them. Uh, but I won't think that I've truly arrived until my wife can do what she wants to do. And right now, like I said, we're getting closer. My wife still make a lot of money. You know, she work a corporate job, she love it. She got 401k benefits. We use her health insurance, just, you know, everything. And so I'm not saying that I want her to quit so she can stay home with the kids or anything like that. I know that my wife, and, and they'll tell you, my wife could easily be on this stage talking right now with, with all she's gone through and her message. And, you know, she's just an incredibly gifted speaker and everything. And she wants to do nonprofit work. She wants to do, you know, all of this. And I won't think that we've truly arrived um, until she can walk away from GE all the money that they pay her, all the benefits and the 401k. She was like, we, I just figured this out, I told Carl. She was like one of the last cohorts to come in that still get a pension. So she'd get like 85, 90% of her pension when she retire. Wow. So you, she probably, so when she retired, let's just say she might be making six figures until she die. And so you, and, right, and so you have to walk away not only from the money right now, the health insurance, the benefits, and all of that, because they match her 401k, dollar for dollar, something crazy like that. But then you're also walking away from a pension that says, if everything went haywire, we're going to have at least a, a hundred some thousand every year to rely on to take care of us in retirement. Now, I don't live on those terms. I don't, I don't, you know, we do no safety net and always have. But my wife is not all the way there yet. And so for me, success will be that day when I can say, I don't care what they got. Let's say you retired at 60, you're going to live to 90, here go 30 years worth of your pension. Sit down somewhere, you know what I mean? And do what you want to do. So for me, that's my next level of success. But to answer your question, it's, a, it's an ongoing process, you know? And, and I'll jump in before E, because I know where that's going to go. <laughs> um, no, so to answer it, success, and, and Chris, I'll steal from you. Chris said he doesn't do the animal assessment for people under the age of, what, 25? And... I think I'm just understanding, similar to what CJ said, it's not a target. Success is not a target. There's not, like, there's no success. I'd say it came for me when I realized that it's nothing that you'll ever, there's no horizon, there's no, there's, there's not that. It's a staircase. That's what it is. For the rest of your life, it's a staircase. So if I were to give you my true measure of what I'll say my success will be, it'll be seen in my kids. Because that'll answer every question, where they are financially, where they are in their education, where they are in society, how they treat their spouses. That's the answer to what success will be for me. Yeah. 
and it'll be a couple of years before I can really see that. You know what I'm saying? But to me, that's the measurement because, like I said, like you can see every aspect of my life and what they turn out to be. It could go any which way. Y'all, par- parents in here, you know that could go any which way. You got only so much control. But to me, that's the ultimate measure that I've done exactly what I was supposed to do in a financial position. Jamal talked about generational wealth. CJ is on that. Like, I want to make sure I leave my kids in a place where they don't have to beg nobody for college. They don't have to do nothing. And I'm saying, I'm not there now. So that's what I said. It's a staircase. I want to have, I want to be able to put their college tuition aside. I'm not there now, but I want to be there and I'm going to put some real qu- like quick terms on that. I want to be there in the next two years. You know what I'm saying? Where I can just safely say your college is taken care of. Not only, not only is your college taken care of, your, your whatever. Like, but one of the goals that I set short term was like, I want to go on a vacation every quarter. And I just said that out of my mouth. I don't even know what that means. I really don't even know what that means. I'm being real. I don't know what that means. But I, I'm just letting y'all know, we just went to Barbados in January. We, I think we're going to a cruise in March. Yeah. That's not even a quarter. So I'm just saying, the, the stuff and that... And was in Barbados before January. And I was in Barbados in August. In August. In so August. So I might be getting closer, but you see what I'm saying? Like, there's, there's so many different there's parts of it. I, I'm trying not to use the cliche, it. but there's so many different parts to it. Um, yeah, so that, yeah, yeah, take it, E. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I just want to say, and it's not to brag, but I really feel like I'm there. You know what I'm saying? Like, what I wanted to accomplish, you know, I'm doing it. Like, I'm, my kids know I'm going to be on their butt but I'm proud of my family. You know what I'm saying? Like people are looking to my family to make decisions. You know what I'm saying? In the world, people are watching videos, people listen to Didi, you know what I'm saying? So my daughter's bringing up the rear and yeah, she got that dog. (laughs) She got that dog, so we good. She the last one, you know what I'm saying? So she got some some stuff that she like, I wish she was better at, but I'm cool because she got that dog. So she gonna find a way for her deficiencies, you know, and my son is doing his thing, graduated, he's doing his thing, you know, so for me, success right now is getting there and staying the same, you know what I'm saying? Like I was at a restaurant yesterday, dude came in and was like, E.T., you sleeping on the job? I'm like, I ain't sleeping on the job with my wife, you bothering me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's like, what you doing? And I said, it's a, a restaurant, I'm eating, you know what I'm saying? I'm with my girl, chill, you know what I'm saying? He all, uh, 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 what you here for? I was talking about patchwork. Oh, my man right here better than patchwork. I'm like, bro, relax. You know what I'm saying? So just being able to remain, like my wife always say, like, how long are we going to keep going to, to, we was at what? Uh, the rack and everybody, what's got people coming up to me? She's like, how long you think you're going? I said, forever. I'm not going to let, I'm not going to let people put me in a room somewhere. Like, we're going to do this forever and because we respectful, people going to respect us. When I say hi and I'm ready to leave, they're going to know it's time to go. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like I'm there. There's no more I want to do, but more of what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I people want... have been recognizing me, too, on the low. I ain't want to tell you that. You know what I'm saying? Get ugly. I didn't want you to think you was the only Get one. Ugly. Hey, but well, hey, I told C in the beginning, this is all his fault that they know who I am this, uh, in the first place. Shout out to place, uh, a, a dude named Big Mike, who I was at the car wash cleaning out my car. He ran up on me. He was like, I listened to the podcast. And also, shout out to whoever the guy was at Coles, who was like, Coles? Coles. Oh, yeah, when you said, they said, what you doing shopping My man was like, what you doing shopping at Coles? <laughs> I like, bro, I like discounts too. <laughs> I, I ain't eat. Yeah, I'm like, right. He might, uh, not, he might want to be my insider. Not insider, <laughs> but don't, yeah, don't, hey, blow, don't blow his head off. I have up. all kinds of not discounts. Quite inside of you, Extreme though. discounts yeah. at Cole. Yeah. 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 yeah, I was Bill in there. Cole. Hey, you know yeah. what? I forgot to tell you. I seen him again. He was like, man, I forgot you shop here. <laughs> I just be going in there now, every now and then, feel a little celebrity factor. I get dressed real sweet, come in there with baddies, you want a bridge shirt, like, ah, you know. That's this house. You know, you want to come by live taping of the podcast, you know, let me know. Who got the I, next question? I know the comedy. The comedy central. <laughs> Let's get the test. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Peace and blessings, guys. Uh, uh, we, are, we are tremendously blessed to be a part of BU because we get so much information. But E, can you just share the heart of school days and and why uh, why you're doing it and 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 how people can support. Yeah, I just think that um, you can't do it without education. You know what I'm saying? Education is what our ancestors fought for. You know, every minority in this country has fought for uh, not just school, but you know, equal access, equal resources, equal teachers. And we know in this country that's not necessarily the landscape. And so I just want to do my part. Um, to help this generation understand, you may never get that. You may never get the best teachers, the best facilities, the best resources, but you can't make excuses. You gotta take what you have. But I think if our babies knew that people cared about them, 
that would give them whatever. And that's all I want to do is go back and just say, like, yo, we care. And it's like what CJ said about the celebrity thing. It's crazy when you, it's crazy now. There used to be a time where we couldn't get into schools. Now we can get into schools. And it's crazy now. Kids are like, yo, we watch y'all on Instagram. Like, y'all actually here. So they're not used to seeing people that they look up to actually come to them. You know, and so for us, that's it. We just want to be present. I know with my father not being in my life, that was the biggest thing. Like, he wasn't present. And so my, my thing is, you have to be present. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be the best. But people love when you are present. They love the fact that you're there. So that's it, man. I just want to go back, and I feel like you, be you, game changers. I really need y'all. I'm not counting on the people, like you said, telling people on podcast. I'm not counting on them, YB. I'm counting on y'all. You know what I'm saying? And I can't wait for the day that I can go into a school with the game changers. Mm. We walk up in there 50 deep. You feel me? Walking in the classroom, there's more of us than kids sitting in the room. You know what I'm saying? You go in the auditorium and we sitting around. For those of you, and you, uh, you Kendall, you understand being a part of the nation, that's the presence of having 50 men. You know what I'm saying? In the space together. And for us to be able to take men and women in a, in a school, and there's 75 of us standing there, and those kids are like, Yo, my mom ain't here, my daddy ain't here, but eat, they're there. And we got, what, 22-year-olds all the way up to maybe 50 years old? For them to see that every generation, you know, is there. Then my mom, the baby boomers, the Generation Y, Generation Z, millennials, we all in that space with the Jays, with the LeBrons, with the Vans. Like, we all in there. So I just want to go in there and let these kids know we love you. And for those who, like somebody wrote us a $10,000 check, if you got a $100,000 check, write it, because C knows. There are teachers that call all the time and say, we want you to come, and we can't come, because it costs money to get on a plane. It costs money, it costs gas to get a bus. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't have a, a bus. You know, imagine if we could afford a bus. You listening, you don't have money, but you have access to a new bus. Shrink wrap that joker for us and give us the bus so we can get on the road and at least hit Ohio, Michigan. I can't say I would get in the bus and go to Florida from Michigan, but I hit Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, you know what I'm saying, um, Michigan. So, yeah, I just want to give back. Like I said, I'm not bragging, but I can't ask God for no more. I can't ask for no more. I don't pray and ask for stuff no more. I can't ask for no more. He's given me everything, a family. Like, my kids don't have a, a disease. Like, they could easily have been born with a defect. My wife got MS, and you can't even tell when you see her she got MS. You know what I'm saying? So I've been given too much. I can never go to God, ask for one more thing. Now all I'm asking for is who can I help? All this you've done for me, I'm blessed. Muy bendecido. I'm blessed. Who can I bless? Who can I be a blessing to? That's all I want to do, and that's all B, uh, uh, get School Days is about. You saw Inky, Jers, um, um, uh, Jeremy was there, Willie Moe Jr. These people they see on TV or people they watch on whatever. And you should see these kids like, there's Willie Moe. My mama listened to Willie Moe on Sunday. You know what I'm saying? He on BT, whatever. So I just want to go back and get that love that we have in this room and the knowledge that we have you know, in this room, so yeah. Jorge, you heard he tried to bust out that Spanish and I look got right something at for you. you. Yeah. I saw Jorge like, hmm, well done. You know what I'm saying? Jorge was like, well done. <laughs> uh, we got time for maybe more? one one or one two more. Because I want remember I just wanted to do a quick piece to him, real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll do that as the nugget of the day, maybe. All right. All right, guys, this is your boy interrupting one last time. This segment is brought to you by Organifi. Now, you guys have been hearing us talk about Organifi for months now. We've been rocking with it, using it. This is not something we just talking about, y'all. We've been rocking with it and using it. My family's using it. And I'm telling you, I feel the difference in my body. And you guys heard Sean talk about it. Look, this, this actually provides the micronutrients. You know, we talk about proteins and carbs and that stuff a lot. But those are macronutrients. Then your body does need them. But what Organifi does is these greens actually provide the micronutrients that you're on a cellular level that your body needs. So it actually makes you feel better, more energetic, you know, and it allows you to get through your day with a lot more energy, guys. So, again, you guys have heard us talk about it. Um, you you want to invest in your health, guys. Without, you know, without your health, you can't enjoy life as it's intended. You know, you could go do whatever, you know, relationships, whatever. But unless you have your health, it's super important. So this is why, man, we rock with Organifi. And we're going to keep rocking with Organifi, and we're going to keep telling you guys about it. And, of course, for all our 
Secrets to Success podcast listeners. We got a special deal so you could just try it out for yourself and you just let us know how you feel at the end of this thing. Try it for a week, you know what I mean, a month. Just let us know how you feel at the end of it. And I'm telling you guys, you're going you're gonna to see the difference. But just use that code SUCCESS. Again, use the code SUCCESS at www.organifi.com. And that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I, organifi.com. Promo code SUCCESS to save 20% on your order. As it relates, so you said something earlier. You said, you said there's a, what you feel sweet is, and then there's what yeah. sweet really is. Yeah. What do you think... And maybe you guys have a story as it relates to your uprising. Yeah. When was there a time that you felt like it was time to change? You know, okay, we <laughs> might, we might right be, on, be on the cusp of, of, of something, but something don't feel right. We need to change and we need to tweak something. And well, so I'll let us. him start with the first change, which was very uncomfortable for me. And that was when he said, you need to be a household name and you need to go up front. And whatever that mm. was very uncomfortable for me. Well, yeah, the first I, change, and this is guys where you know you, you saw me do the branding session and yeah. take control the other day. But this is where this really came into play um, because our company, our, our nonprofit, was called Break the Cycle, and like I said, we used to roll as a unit, and it was like he was the de facto leader because he was older than us, and it was kind of like his show. But like we never like pushed E, we pushed Break the Cycle, and in my mind, I knew. People connect with people, not necessarily companies. You know what I'm saying? Like, like break the cycle. Like, that don't have a face. Break the cycle don't have a wife. It don't have kids. Like, there's nothing to it that makes it stick. So we might come in and do the work, and they might have been like, oh, wow, those guys came in and did a great work. But the name itself wasn't going to catch. And so I told Ian Carl, scrap break the cycle. We don't even need a company. We just going E.T., Eric Thomas, E.T. the Hip Hop Preacher, E.T. Inspires, everything you see, we went with that. And that was the first major shift we made because I wanted people to be able to put a face with the movement. I wanted the pe people to be able to put a voice with the movement and not say, oh, break the cycles coming to our school, that's not exciting. But saying E.T. or Eric Thomas is coming, that actually meant something. So that was like when my like branding brain first kind of turned on was just like, and, and I'm not a genius, I just noticed that people were attracted to celebrity in this country. And so I said this the other day, think about this for it. In terms of branding and how important branding is, and I said this to you guys, but I'm gonna say it on the podcast so they can hear me. When E.T. did the Secret to Success speech, which may be the best motivational speech, one of the best motivational speeches in the history of the world, he did that speech on, let's say, a Tuesday night. And on Wednesday, a school told me, no, he can't come to the school and speak because we don't know who he is. Wow. You know what I mean? So the product was incredible. Like, that was a life changer. That's changed millions of lives with that speech. Athletes, entertainers across the globe. And the day after he made that speech, somebody told us, like, nah, we straight on him. <laughs> like, what? That's crazy. And so I understood that celebrity meant something, name recognition meant something. So now when he goes to Orlando to do a corporate company for $60,000, he can call, like, we, I could literally just dial Orlando Public Schools in the phone book right. and be like, Eric Thomas right. is coming. Uh -uh. Shut everything down. <laughs> like, we've gone into districts and we've gone into schools and they were like, what do you want us to do? That get on the principal run to the mic. Everybody in the auditorium now, you know. And I'm like, that wasn't always our reality, and not because we weren't good enough. I just told you the secret to success speech, one of the best speeches in the world. So after that, we couldn't get a gig. It had to be something different. It had to be the brand. So the first major change that we made was shifting the way people saw the brand. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's great. Appreciate that. That's that's yep. great. One more. One more. Who got the last one? Go for it, Isaiah. No, with the Thank you for the Starbucks, sir. Oh, that's where uh, I'm going with that. I look very elite. Yes, I would. Hey, hey. Business is boom. Hey. Business is boom. I would like an a, a, a insider at Starbucks to call me. Now, that, that's when you need an insider, for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're in your hotel. Uh, yep. They're not. They, they will beat up. I'm that's speaking this one into existence. They actually... To give you a heads up, they work with foundations more than they work with corporate sponsorships. So with the School Days Foundation, hmm. actually, if you go to a school, they'll actually give you all the coffee, and then you can also get finances to go in. 
No. I'm sorry. <coughs> Let's go. Sorry, repping. But no, I wanted to talk about the truth first, the your truth versus that truth. And you spoke on it about giving people what they want instead of giving them what you think they want. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if you can talk about the right service as opposed to getting to the truth, as opposed to, because with the game changer speakers, a lot of us are trying to go speak, but we're trying to give them our truth instead of giving them what they need. Because if mm -hmm. I would have came with the, my favorite Starbucks drink, I don't think you would have drank it. Mm. And then That's it wouldn't true. be giving a shout out, like, thank you for the copy. It would have been like, man, is this guy a weirdo? Like, mm -hmm. I don't even drink white chocolate mocha. Yeah. So just to, just to keep yeah, one on that uh, and, and guys, this is why I tell you, don't try to speak first, volunteer first, and do it regularly. Because it is inside of speaking that you learn everything you need to learn. So when you're going in as a speaker, you're an outsider. And that's the advantage I have on most of the people who do the work that I do. You're going into an environment, right? You're going into an environment as a stranger trying to talk to the trying to talk to somebody right whereas when you go in and you're an insider you just get a different level of respect you, you feel what i'm saying people know you right so if you are haitian and somebody sock by say somebody knows the language as soon as you start speaking creole they like oh okay bet you know what i'm saying they take their guard down you know you speak spanish somebody you speak spanish they, they take their guard down if I come into a place and I don't speak your language, you're looking at me like, who are you? So that's why somebody, I guess we were in an event, my man stood up, he's smart, at the Game Changers. He was like, what up, though? He didn't say he was from Detroit. He said, what up, though? I said, east side, west side. That's a Detroit saying. So he identified himself. So when you go into a school or wherever you want to speak and you go in as an outsider, they're not going to give you the same pub. They're going to give you an insider. So you volunteer so you can learn the code, the language, and the rules, right? I saw a dude yesterday. He had on a shirt that said Michigan State, right here, Michigan State University, and it had Michigan State pink. I'd never seen it before, but it was green, Michigan State green, but it said pink. So I said, go green. And he said, absolutely. And I was like, oh, yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> and I don't even know my man, and my wife said, he ain't oh, going yeah. to Michigan State. He don't know nothing. He don't know, right? He's not even from East Lansing. Yeah, you know what nah. I'm saying? Uh -huh. If he was from East Lansing, he would have known, right? So what you guys do wrong is that you're going into an environment as an outsider. And, and whether you like it or not, people sn sniff people first. We don't just give people credentials. We sniff people out first. We ask the questions. Are you boom, 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 boom? That's why I always say when I'm on the podcast, I ain't no vegan. I'm just trying to eat right for my wife. Because then vegans going to be, why are you wearing fur? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a world. It ain't just a food. It's like a life. It's like, it's like if you go to a vegan stop, stop. It's a culture. Like, they look a certain way. They, like, don't like to destroy the earth. You know what I'm saying? I ain't on that. I'm on my girl. You feel what I'm saying? I don't got nothing to do with that. I'm not against a cow getting shot. I'm not against that. I'm just saying, there's something, they like... I told animals. you Peter tweeted yeah, you the yeah. other day, I, man. I'm they're going to be so disappointed and, and I just, to hear you say that. And I just that. want to know. I'm not, for real, I, I'm not. Peter thought I'm, he was one yeah, of them. I'm not, that, that's I not my culture. Cops. So that's what y'all do wrong. When you go in, I can sniff you out. You've never been in my environment before. Your language tells on you. Your, your posture tells on you. Everything say you're an outsider. And we treat outsiders a certain way. We treat insiders a different way. So that's why you volunteer every week. You volunteer every week because you pick up stuff. And then when you do your thing, it's like you one of them. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's why I keep telling y'all, stop speaking when it's time to speak. And practice so you can pick up stuff. And when you go in and talk to the teachers, when I go talk to the principals, I'm about to meet with the superintendent of the school. I'm about to say a couple choice words to my man and leave. I'm, we're going to talk about retention, right? That we're going to talk about retention rates. We're going to talk about morale how to build a morale of your, your teachers. We're gonna just talk about a couple stuff, like if it's Final Four, they burned out. I don't care what little uh, workshops you send them to, they burned out right now. And so what, So they're not giving your students 120% because they burnt out. And if they burnt out, whatever. My man's gonna be like, is there a way you can help them with the burnout? A actually, there is. We have a program. Well, when can I get the program? Or oh, 50%, you give us 50% and we can send you the program. You feel me? So I think that's the key. And so when you call me and ask me, I can tell you, but it's still like me telling, you know what I'm saying? 
me telling you what to do for your girl and you do it. It's going to lose a little bit when I buy the gift to give to you to give to her. It's going to take a little bit off of it because it didn't come from you. But when it comes from you, it's the sincerity and whatever. So for those of you who are watching me, you go louder because you think I go loud. You're not paying attention. I do go loud, but there's a time to go loud. And I know when that time is, and I know when that time is to bring it down because I've been with them so long that I know when they're not listening. I, hey, C was speaking, Maya was speaking, Chris was speaking, everybody was speaking. I was sitting in the back looking like, oh, okay, yep, they're on their phone. Yep, I got to tell them that they was on their phone when they said that. That didn't connect with them apparently. Oh, they checked out. Oh, but when you came back later and said that, they came back. You feel me? I peeped them out. I'm watching them. I watched CJ with the white glove boy. That got nothing to do with nothing. But the white glove boy, I saw everybody geeked up, laughing, all in it. I'm like, yeah, y'all might want to do some examples and not just give me facts. I'm writing stuff down as they do it. I know the C said that. You might want to do that. He walked from over here. I noticed you stood right there the whole time. You might want to move. C move. You might want to move. Ask him why he moved. You might want to ask him why he moved. Because you didn't move. And because you didn't move, they didn't move. You know what I'm saying? Like they didn't follow you. And so they started doing their phone. I noticed that they were, you feel me? It ain't nothing against you. I'm about to tell you truth. Mm. I'm just going to tell you truth of what happened when you spoke. This is what happened. So if you want to stop that from happening, I saw him do this. You might want to do that. And then you too can, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that's one of the greatest things about being here, right? Is you speak and you get immediate feedback from people. And like I told you guys yesterday, you don't take every single piece of feedback and try to incorporate it all. You, take, you, you see if there's a consensus. If the whole room say you're moving too fast, you're moving too fast. If the whole room felt you were too vague, maybe you're too vague. And so you can add pieces to your game. Carl asked me yesterday, he was like, man, you know, now it's time to, you know, we're getting a lot of people certified. It's time to start growing, growing the program. How do we keep this family atmosphere? And I said, we're only going to take people that want to be a part of a family. And so um, that's our, our promise to you that we, we're not going to be bring people in here who just looking to, you know, blow up and, and, and get out of here, but people who actually want to contribute to this community. And so uh, for those of you in listener land who want to join us, Game Changers. Um, ETAGameChangers.com. ETAGameChangers.com. Fill out an application. We're just now to the point where we're ready to start expanding this thing. Um, you know, we wanted to make sure we could provide the service to you guys at a high level, and I think it's been good so far. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and honestly, just to see the growth that you guys have experienced has been crazy. So uh, if you're out there and you're interested in joining this family atmosphere, we meet, um, you know, once a quarter for two days and just go in. They speak in front of E and myself, and we give them feedback as a group, hang out, eat together, do the podcast together, all kind of stuff. So um, appreciate you guys first and foremost because you were the first cohort to take a chance with us. Uh, but for those of you who are ready to go to that next level in your speaking career, ready to start taking it up, uh, getting paid engagements, et cetera, we'd love to have you join us. So go to etagamechangers.com. Uh, we'll be in Charlotte on February 25th. Um, excited about that. It's going to be a great session, the Take Control session in Dallas on March 18th. Um, so, and then we'll be cruising in between then. And uh, I'm excited even though my wife is not. Um, and uh, She will be. <laughs> yeah, I think, that's the, uh, I think that's the announcements that I have. E, you wanna, you wanna close this out? Yeah, so I paid attention to you guys yesterday. This is why I like, this is why I like, you know, to continue to learn because I feel you, right? And I, and I just came in for that, that quick moment. And, you know, I was paying attention to you guys. And there's some of you that, um, for real, you gifted. And I got to get you past, like, I got to get you past that, that fear, right? So I'm going to do something to show y'all. Um, so El Sonido, de Espanol me asusta. When I would hear Spanish, I would just get frightened, right? So I would just woo, right? So. Uh, cuando uh, escucho, uh, que es hora, uh, de, uh, I'm sorry, um, again, cuando escucho, que es hora de estudiar, estudiar, es español, estoy ner nervioso, uh, ¿por qué? Es nuevo, yo español, Not, no yo español, es, uh, habla inglés. Right? Uh, uh, muy esto nervioso. Right? I, 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 I get nervous. Right? Why? It's new. Right? Pero no paro. But I won't stop. Right? I won't stop. Puedo, no puedo, no puedo parar. 
No puedo detener. I'm not going to stop. Uh, 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 yo uh, practico más, o más practico. Lo siento, más practico o practico más. Right? No más. So I, I, I just keep practicing. Otra vez, otra vez, otra vez, y otra vez. Right? Cada día. Right? So, so some of y'all, I feel you. I get well, nervous. Hey, man, you hell on, man. Let me, that was impressive. That was I'm impressive. Saying, I'm saying, I, I know we I gotta get been. the app. Yeah, the first, the first hundred days. I need like, Rosetta I, Stone right I, now. I, I was struggling. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? I'm, I'm sorry, I should, I say, um, uh, me sientes. Me sientes. You feel me? Like, I, I, I'm, I'm there. I, I, I get why y'all would, but you gotta, you gotta keep going. You can't stop. And I saw some of y'all yesterday. It's like you on a nervous boy. That's real. Mm -hmm. I, I know what you're going through. I, I, the sound of it. Somebody said, when is this? I'm like, when is this? <laughs> I mean, it didn't sound like that on the app. You know what I'm saying? Like, what am I supposed to say? You know what I'm saying? You, you say, muy bien. Gracias. E too. But when I hear it, I can't even talk because I'm so nervous that I'm like, but E, you know it. And I'll hear a word like, you know that. You, you know you know that. But when, it's, when I'm getting in front of somebody and they asking me, I'm like completely, I don't know what <laughs> you know I'm, I'm saying? Like, come on, E, let's go. So I, I got to just keep doing it. You know, and this week, it was like, yo, E, you got to put that down. Like, you're doing the app, that's cool, but you, that's a crutch. That's your wheelchair. Just talk. And the only way you're going to get better is just talking. You got it. You feel me? And so I watched some of y'all yesterday, and it's like, yo, y'all, y'all would be here if God didn't want y'all here first, right? The creator, this is the creator's design. But I feel y'all because it happened to me, and I'm glad it happened to me. So I'm not talking down to y'all. I was just doing it. People was like, I heard you was spent, and they'd say something, and I'm like, I walk away hurt. Like, I knew that. <laughs> I knew exactly what they said. I'm listening to it all day, every day. But the fear of why? Es nuevo. I, 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 I me. It's new to me. I don't, I don't know it. But when I calm down and we just start doing, it's like, hey, you know this stuff. Leave the app alone. Just start saying it. Get you a dictionary. Do your thing. Sept September. I said I'm going. It's like you could do it before September. It's not that deep. But the fear, the nervousness. I watch y'all. Y'all get here and all of a sudden you just get nervous. Like, stop. That's why Mike. I, I was asking my son, I was like, who spoke? He's like, I don't know, but the dude with the mic, he had the mic on his shirt. My man seemed like he had been doing this before. Why? Because you do it all the time, right? Be careful for do, doing it in the video all the time and not doing it for real, for real, because it's becoming a crutch to some of y'all. Mm -hmm. The video's sweet, but you ain't in front of nobody. Mm -hmm. For real. Right. I'm talking about, I've got Mui B. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, E, relax. <laughs> relax. And then, you know what I had to realize? I had to realize one day when I was doing English and I would see people I don't know and I speak English, I would realize they ain't gonna ask you for a couple things, but in Spanish I'd be scared like they're gonna hold a full blown conversation. <laughs> and I don't know where to go next. Where's you know what I'm saying? And I was like, yo, it's not that deep. It, what it, you know what you know and what you don't know, you just say you don't know and you keep going. And I watched y'all yesterday, like you, you, you did what I did. You let that, you let that fear come on you when you get on that mic. And all you got to do is do it, just keep doing it a whole bunch of time, do it in front of your friends, do it with your spouse, find an accountability partner, do it with them, and I promise you, it's going to come. And when I practice, I'm way sweeter than when I do it here. But I realize, because I practice to myself way more than I do it in front of people. And it's like, yo, this is the time just to jump yeah. out. So when y'all leave, do me a favor, jump out and just do it, do it, do it. Are you going to be nervous? See. Yeah. Yeah. Cierto. <laughs> it's true. You go, it's going to happen to you. But the more you do it, the more you practice, right? The more you practice, otra vez, otra vez, again and again, over and over and over, eventually it's going to come. And now I'm embarrassed. Like, I know all of that. But because you haven't used it, that's why it's not flowing. So just go get embarrassed. Just go mess up. It ain't like Jorge be like, Eric, don't ever say it again. You messed up. You know what I'm saying? He just say, this is how you probably should say it. And there are multiple ways to say it. Don't even think it's just one way. So just do it. So for real, y'all, yeah. I feel y'all. I'm going through it. Jump. Get from out. Uh, get. Don't let them videos be a crutch. Stop just doing videos. Get in front of humans. If it's five, if it's ten, practice, 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 so that you get comfortable when it's showtime. But there's nothing like real time. 
I seen kids practice at Michigan State basketball, and then I seen a different player when it was showtime, when we was when we had Duke, when we had to go play Duke somewhere. Some dudes come up, I saw Miles Bridge the other day, hit a three, like, boom, whatever. I'm talking about it was a long, my man was standing right, boom. But then the other dudes who could shoot a three, who like thinking, three, everybody looking, three, am I gonna make it? He shot it like, whatever, I mean, it's, it is what it is. We, we either we're going to win or we're going to lose. Boom, go for it. All right, so get out there, y'all. Stop practicing and start doing it live yeah. in real time. And uh, I look forward to the results that you guys are getting. Yeah. Thanks for rocking with us. Yeah, and real quick, yeah, I just want to say, I told me and Jorge had a conversation. You know, one of the things that really helps me to not be nervous is, like, when I get in there and I look at the people, like, this is for yeah. them. Yeah. When I'm nervous, it's about me because I'm worried about like how people are looking at me and how they see me and am I going to mess up and am I going to be this and am I and am I and am I and am I and am I. So when I get up there, even like the other day when you guys saw me at Take Control, so pack room, everybody waiting to see what you got to say. I truly believe that I have some information that could take somebody's company and their brand to the next level. So when I'm looking at them, I'm not looking at them going, are they judging me? I'm saying, man, if I can get them this information in the right way, somebody's life is going to change. And so Scott, for you, an adult learner, if they can go to that next level and get into you know, the, the, their degree program and graduate with a degree, and that's going right. to make their life better. If they're actually going to improve their quality of life, their marriage, their family, they're gonna be able to provide extra vacations, they're gonna be able to retire in peace and not have to work at Walmart and, and, and do that for the rest of their lives, because, not because they want to, because they have no choice. That's what you need to be thinking about when you get ready to speak. Not, is my tie right? right. Is this right? It, nah, it's not about that. And I just learned, and, and a lot of you guys came up to me like, see, that was fire, you killed it. And the reason you saying that is because it was about you. I gave everything I had to you. I didn't have myself caught up in the moment. And so, Mike, when you go into a high school, there's no reason to be nervous. You got some information that could change a kid's trajectory for the rest of his life. Instead of going to prison, he's gonna go to college. That's not about you. That's about the message that you're providing. So when I go in and speak to somebody, I, and I'm not gonna say everybody gets butterflies, but I really get nervous, and not because I'm some sweet speaker and my stuff is all planned out, but because I'm really trying to pour into you, and I know I have the information. This ain't a show. You know what I mean? I try to tell you guys that all the time. It's not Broadway. What he does is change lives. You think, that's why he don't care if he mess up a word or skip over something or say something wrong. We, we, we're not here for uh, uh, an, an uh, oratory competition. All right. All right. This man has information that'll change a life. Like, that's a big deal. This has nothing to do with, oh, did I say this right? My slide wouldn't clear. I don't care. I'll throw this thing. I know, I know my information. So what the slide broke? If you're here to see pretty slides, go home. I'll never forget, he told me a long time ago when, when the corporate company asked him to wear a suit, he said, you looking for GQ or you want some information? Because I got the information. You want a fashion shoot, you should probably call Vogue magazine and see if they can hook you up. I'm coming in to deliver a word, and I want you all to keep that in mind as speakers and as game changers. You have information. All of you have incredible information. Angela, you're gonna give us some great information. You understand how to change mathematics and the way this works in our world. You have the ability to change the, a country that struggles in mathematics. You get up there and think about that, not what we think, and was her audio right, and was her mic right, and did she walk the stage right? All of that is cool, and it matters, right? It, Cantus gave us some excellent tips, but at the end of the day, the heart of what you do has to be in it if you're gonna change the game. And if the heart's in it, they'll love you forever. So we, when I prepare to speak, y'all. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Carl, hey, Carl, yeah. <laughs> I'm acting silly, y'all. Y'all know what I need to do. Look, um, so, so that's it, man. I, I just want you guys, yeah. I do wanna say this, though. Y'all y'all are game changers, don't forget that. Like, for real, don't forget that. And I say this because and if you are like everybody else, there's not going to be anything different about you. Mm -hmm. But we crave to be like everybody else because we're afraid to be, we won't be accepted. But if you like everybody else, then they're not going to want, why should I get you if you just like, if you look like Louis, why should I get you if you look just like Louis? It don't, you see how like a coach or sometimes or change their logos to try to do Louis? If I want Louis, I want Louis. I don't, I don't want you. Guys, what we want in this company, if you are a game changer, we don't want you to sound nothing like nobody else. We don't want, we, if, if you was gonna be those other companies, they gonna make sure you sound just like them. That's not what we want. And you need, to, you need to love your uniqueness and you need to wear your uniqueness with, well, I'm talking about with pride. I'm all about growing. 
But for real, guys, wear it with pride. You are different for a reason. That's why you in ETA. If you wanted to be normal, you'd be with them. So, so wear it and stop comparing. There's nobody else like you. And once you understand that, there's nobody else doing it the way I do it. Nobody. And so that's what makes me unique. That's why they want to pay. They're going to pay you too. They got a budget. You don't got to be like E. You ain't got to worry about it. They got, don't they got money? Tell them they got money out there, right? And, 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 and what he's been doing for years, he's helping me do it now. He ain't say, nope, I can't help E.T. because with school days, because there ain't enough money. It's enough money for all of us. But if you acting just like everybody else and you wearing what everybody else is wearing and talking like everybody else, you're going to be number five or six. But when you become you, you're going to go to a whole other level. And you're here also because you care about people, right? So wear that with pride, y'all. Y'all represent me wherever y'all go. <laughs> I represent y'all wherever I go, so I take that serious, right? I take that serious. Every gig I do, I'm trying to blow it up because if you got that ET certified on there and I'm whack, they not going to call you. Nike got, I think, who was it about to leave Nike at one point? Was it KD about to try to go with Under Armour for a quick second? Mm -hmm. And then he came on back. He like, I got to go with the switch. (laughs) They ain't got nobody over there. We want to make, in the speaking world, when they see that ET, a speaker certified, we want to do half the work for you. We want half the work to be done when they see that, but then you got to come and do your part too, right? When you show up, Boston got their butt beat yesterday. LeBron was like, look, y'all, we just did a switch. I'm going to need y'all to make, I'm going to score what I always score. But I'm going to need y'all to come in here and do what y'all supposed to do. And I guarantee you, we don't know for sure, but everybody on the East like, uh-oh, it ain't going to be as easy as we thought it was going to be. You know, so yes, we've done our part, but please, when you go out, you represent us. Make sure you do your part as well. All right? Y'all give it up for ET, man. Y'all give it up for yourself. Hey, we're going to jump off the mic now and turn it over to our game changers. Now it's y'all turn. I'm excited to see y'all. Get busy. Uh, thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. I want you to focus on here right now. Don't you worry about when you get home. You make this, you concentrate on this opportunity. You don't worry about tomorrow. You concentrate on this opportunity.